Hey everyone, Dr. Mike Hansen here. Today, I'm taking you through a crucial health journey about a silent threat lurking in some of our kitchens. That is carbon monoxide poisoning. In a spotlight on its unsuspected source, indoor ovens like this Z-Line oven right here, or Z-Line range it's called. This is a topic close to my heart because I had a personal experience with this oven, which was emitting carbon monoxide. The Z-Line ovens or ranges were recalled in January of 2023 and consumers were offered a repair. For those who had their oven repaired, they thought their oven was repaired. But unknowingly, the Z-Line range was still emitting CO. The Z-Line 30 and 36 gas rangers could actually leak carbon monoxide. Good news, there's a repair option that the manufacturer will provide. So then in November of 2023, Z-Line expanded the remedies available to consumers to offer them either a replacement range or a refund. Before the recall, Z-Line received 44 reports of carbon monoxide emissions. And this included three reports of consumers actually seeking medical attention. After the recall was announced, Z-Line received 131 reports that the repair was not completed successfully and that the ranges were still emitting dangerous levels of carbon monoxide. Let's talk about how and why carbon monoxide is so incredibly dangerous. CO is a pervasive stealthy poison and on average, it causes 400 accidental deaths in the United States every year. As at least 430 people die in the US every year from carbon monoxide poisoning, not linked to fires. And more than 20,000 visit the emergency room for the same reason. Carbon monoxide is found in fumes from generators, stoves, lanterns, gas ranges, and more. It's a colorless, odorless gas that's hard to detect unless you have a carbon monoxide detector. When it's in the air, you inhale it and it travels across our alveoli in the lungs. And it actually does this much faster than oxygen. And it binds to the hemoglobin molecule in our blood much stronger than oxygen leading to the formation of something called carboxyhemoglobin, which means your blood can't carry as much oxygen. Not only that, but it also alters that oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve, meaning the hemoglobin molecule doesn't want to give up that oxygen as easy. So it's like the Amazon delivery driver showing up, your, showing up at your front door with your package, but not wanting to hand it over. So your brain and your other organs are deprived of oxygen. At the cellular level, the carbon monoxide parallels cyanide toxicity by hindering mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation, which forces a shift to anaerobic metabolism, and this results in the cell dying. The sequela of neurological impairments following CO exposure can be delayed, possibly due to hypoxic injury, reperfusion damage, and lipid peroxidation that's mediated by nitric oxide release from platelets. Typically, the brain is the first organ to be affected and the first symptom to appear is usually a headache. Other common symptoms include irritability, confusion, nausea, and dizziness. In fact, delayed neurological complications occur in 20% of CO exposures, and this includes neurological disorders, cognitive dysfunction, and psychiatric issues. These effects can significantly impact daily functioning and typically require formal neuropsychiatric evaluation for diagnosis. Differential diagnoses for mild to moderate CO poisoning can be complex, with symptoms often misattributed to benign conditions. That's why it's crucial to consider CO poisoning in patients with persistent headaches, especially when others in the same environment present similar symptoms at the same time. So severe carbon monoxide poisoning can manifest as lethargy, coma, and of course, death. Diagnostic suspicion of CO poisoning hinges on patient history and physical examination with cooximetry serving as a confirmatory test. The severity of poisoning may not correlate directly with carboxyhemoglobin levels as prolonged exposure to low concentrations can actually be fatal despite having low carboxyhemoglobin readings. The initial step in treating patients is oxygen therapy, which basically accelerates the elimination of carboxyhemoglobin. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or HBO, can further reduce that carb carboxyhemoglobin half-life with its primary goal being the prevention 
of delayed neurological complications rather than the immediate mortality reduction. And there is controversy that surrounds the efficacy of HBO, particularly when initiation is delayed as its benefits are not immediate and they require sophisticated follow-up for outcome assessment. Now for patients who do have significant carbon monoxide exposure, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is recommended, especially in the presence of neurological or cardiovascular instability. The decision to administer HBO should not rely solely on the carboxyhemoglobin levels. You have to account for the overall clinical presentation. What are the symptoms? How severe is that patient impaired? Now, if someone does have carboxyhemoglobin levels of 25% or higher, but they don't have actually any symptoms, it is actually still recommended for that person to get hyperbaric oxygen. Unless that person is actually pregnant because then the threshold would be lowered to 15% carboxyhemoglobin levels because then you have concerns for the fetus as well. The most important takeaway from this video is that anyone with a carbon monoxide exposure needs careful follow-up to monitor for delayed neurological sequela, but also every home should have a carbon monoxide detector in it to prevent needless tragedies.